Well, folks, here we are at the final fill up at the end of the trip. As you can see, it's filled to the brim. I did the first tank just before I left, filled to the brim, and the last tank uh, when I got home, filled to the brim. The intermediate tanks, I didn't bother to top them off, so because it takes uh, five minutes to top it off like this. Well, folks, I'm and I finished the trip. Um, the odometer rolled over twice. I didn't reset it the whole trip, so that's actually 2,789.9 miles. I rounded that up to 2,790 miles. <clears throat> um, you can see my odometer rolled over 100,000 miles while I was on the trip. So, the gauge, also, I did not reset it the whole trip. I reset it at the beginning, and it's at 16.9. I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, but I did actually did the calculations here. We drove 2,790 miles. And those are the various fill-ups. Uh, the last one, I just topped it off, 14.9. So at the beginning, before I started, I, I topped the tank off to the brim. You could see the fuel in the neck. And I did the same thing at the very end. So I used 149.831 gallons. And that calculates out to a very surprising 18.62 miles per gallon. Now I've checked my numbers a couple times here. I'm pretty sure that is exactly correct. I've never gotten that good a gas mileage, fuel mileage on this truck ever, no matter what kind of driving I did. Um, <clears throat> so this trip, the speed limits in the northeast are not quite as fast as uh, in the southeast where I do most of my driving. Um, Pennsylvania, the speed limit is 55. Most everywhere else it was 60 or 65. Uh, I tried not to ex to exceed the speed limit. Uh, consequently, I was the slowest truck on the road most of the time. Um, so, but anyway, that's pretty good, 18.62. Uh, we spent at least two hours in traffic tie-ups. Uh, when we got close to New York City, twice the traffic came to a stop and we just creeped along basically at idle. You know, going from zero miles an hour to two, somewhere around in there. And then once again in um, in North Carolina, there was a traffic accident, and the tra traffic backed way up. So two hours sitting at idle. I drove about 300 miles on Mount Desert Island in Maine. Um, I drove about 100 miles in Boston, uh, city traffic. I could just feel the diesel fuel being sucked out of the tank in the city. The rest of the time was on the freeway. Um, I had the air conditioning on about half the time. This is going to be sort of a boring video. But anyway, it's, um, I'm pretty happy. that I had to push the, my brick to 60 amps. I think I'll do that while I video the, the brick. All right, well, this is my setup again. I've done videos of this. Um, in an effort to get more fuel mileage, I've been pushing this setup, this brick. It's my original brick. Pushing it to 60 amps. I tried going as high as 70, but when that happens, when I go up to 70, these connections degrade too rapidly. Even at 60 amps, they degrade. They, they should have been soldered on or bolted or something, but this is what I have to work with. Um, as you can see, I've got the white wires are positive. So I have four positive wires and three negatives. So the negative plates are being shared by two positives. Consequently, these wires right here get hot fast because the connection degrades. And once the connection starts to degrade, they get hotter and it goes rapidly downhill. So I designed this brick to run at 40 amps. I figured these wires would be adequate, but at 60 amps I do have the problem with the wires getting hot. Uh, now, to get this thing to pull 60 amps on a regular basis is pretty tricky because on short trips it doesn't warm up. So I have this really concentrated sodium hydroxide mixture in here and typically when I'm just doing my normal driving I keep the reservoir filled to about here. Um, so I usually drive 15 minutes to an hour, never more than that. Lots of stops, so it gives the brick a chance to cool down. So when I go on a long trip, I've got to fill it way up. I put it, fill the reservoir up to here. That gives more water in the system. It's the same amount of sodium hydroxide, just more water. And that allows it to cool more. And that works pretty well. I can keep the, the amperage up there pretty good. But if the air temperature gets cool, like when I drive at night, the amp draw goes down. And... Uh, when it rains, and like in this trip, we had a lot of heavy rain that we drove through, and of course the air is cooler during the rain, and plus this is open to the sky, 
and this gets wet and it, the water cools it off, the cold rainwater, especially when I was up there in the northeast up in the main area, the rainwater was really cold and, and this thing would it drop down to about 40 amps during the rain. So the other problem I have is on my, my relay setup here, I don't, I'm not going to take the cover off, I've filmed that many times before. There's four relays, four circuit breakers in here. When I'm pulling 60 amps, or up like 65 amps, one of these circuit breakers along the bottom tends to overheat and trip. So my amps will drop and they'll go back up and they'll drop and that can't be good for anything. So to prevent that from happening, I loosened this cover. I used to drive with the cover completely off, but this, that leaves us exposed to the rain. So I loosen the cover and that lets enough air to go up in there to keep that circuit breaker from tripping when I'm pulling 60 amps. Um, so I'm really anxious to get a new brick with a more advanced design. This is pretty primitive. It's not the MMW is not that great. Uh, I need something that'll pull a lot more amps, and I need another way to power it, obviously. But this is pretty good. I got 18.62 miles per gallon. I've never gotten that good before.